Lord Jesus, speak through your word. Get all the glory so that the world knows that there is a king who sits on the throne and that our king is sovereign over the affairs of men. And all thrones and all principalities and all power are subject to him. And I ask that you would speak with such might and clarity that there is no mistaking that it's you that's speaking and that I don't speak of my own will or my own conventions, but from your authority. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll do me a favor and if you will honor the living God by giving him some form of an appreciation, whether it's a shout, an applause, a yell. I also need you to give him a sound of victory while you're doing it. A, a sound, a sound of victory. Humor me for a moment. We're going to try that again because I don't know that you understand. Um, I, I am weary of stadiums filled with people who like a particular team being much louder than those of us who have spiritual authority and victory in Christ Jesus. I believe that God deserves a sound for bringing you through a pandemic, for protecting your life, for redeeming you from destruction, for establishing his word in your life. I believe that God is worthy of a sound. Give me some organ in that same kind of vibe. I need. Yeah. Now give me some symbols on that. Give me some of that. I want to paint a picture for you. This is how the Lord's about to show up in your situation. It's going to start real quiet. Then he's going, you're going to hear him coming from a distance. The wind of God, the breeze of God, the breath of God, the life of God. Then he's going to start speaking into your spirit. It's, it's going to sound like a little bit of bass. And God's going to crescendo that thing. And, and you're going to know it's an unmistakable move of God that's getting ready to envelop and overtake your life because God's getting ready to let the whole world know that he had his hand on you the entire time. I don't know who this is for. Now, Dante, you come on and add something to it. And there will be a moment where it will all come together. And then you'll understand why he had to bring each piece in on its own. And then when you hear the whole thing together, the whole song will finally make sense. And what didn't make sense by itself and what, make, what didn't make sense in pieces will suddenly make a complete sound. And the sound is a sound of authority. The sound is a sound of power. The sound is a sound of strength. The sound is a sound of might. Stay right there. I like that. Y'all might be playing for the whole next 20 minutes. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go. Therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Matthew 28 is the end of the conclusion. It is the conclusion of the book of Matthew. This is after Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus was raised from the dead. The Bible says God raised Jesus from the dead. And if God can raise Jesus from the dead, he can raise you from the dead. He can raise your situation from the dead. More than the power of the resurrection, he can keep you from death. The Bible says in Psalm 91 that he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Pastor Joel Johnson is on the front row this morning. I don't know how and I don't know why. Because what night was it when you text me? Thursday night, his son, who's normally next to him in the service, was riding his bike down the driveway, correct? There were two cement trucks that were parked. So their kids, they're driving, they're riding their bikes down the driveway. And the cement trucks blocked the view. And he didn't see the car coming. And his son was hit by a car on his bike. His son was hit. His ankle is broke. But he is alive. <laughs> So if you see Pastor Joel giving God an inordinate amount of praise, don't wonder why God saved his son. Now, I don't know about you, but if God saved my son's life, because there are people who slip and fall in the house and don't get up. Life is gone. Bump your head on the side of a table. It's over. Go in for a routine surgery and don't come out. Hit by a car and you're alive. Let me tell you something. That wasn't an airbag. It wasn't chance. It wasn't luck. It was an angel. And God said, get down there and stop it. It can hit him, but it can't take his life. I need you to know that God is the one telling the death angel no because God is the one with all authority. Now, I need somebody to give God a praise. He's got the authority to tell the devil no. There's a hallelujah there, elder. Some of these people in here are playing games. You're alive because the authority of God's voice told the devil not today. Now, I'm going to need a number of people to intercede for me right now. I'm in tremendous pain. And, Will, I'm going to need you and Elder Nick and maybe a couple of others. At certain moments today, I'm going to need you to be my surrogate voice. I cannot yell. I, have, I had a wisdom tooth extracted. And then it got infected. Wherever the, the place where it was removed... And so right now, at this second, the pain that I'm feeling is really almost unbearable. But I have a word from God, and I was not going to not show up today. I have preached every Sunday since October. And I'm going to keep preaching until the Lord says, sit down for a second. I'm saying it because there's something that God wants out of my voice particularly in the places where I didn't feel worthy and where other people said, you need to sit down and don't ever open your mouth again. But because you didn't call me, you can't shut me up. Somebody in here needs to understand that you're not standing in your own power. You're not standing in your own authority. You're standing in the authority of the one who called you. Now this service just took a very different turn because I know what I sense in the spirit. There's a warfare because the enemy is agitated that our church is taking territory. I need a couple people interceding for me. Intentional authority. Somebody say intentional 
authority. Oh, God, speak right now. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. I'm not going to be able to yell, so I'm going to need y'all to shout for me, and I'll tell y'all when. But I need you to look at somebody. I need you to look them straight in the eye. Look at them. Don't be, you know how we get nervous when we look at somebody in the eye. Look at them. Tell them you may not know this, but heaven knows my name. Okay, y'all didn't get so so. Look at that same person. Say that, and since heaven knows my name, I have authority. Go ahead and be seated. Everything that's happening in this moment in the body of Christ is rooted in authority. Somebody say authority. Authority is a critical component to understanding the advancement of God's kingdom. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Okay. Um, we just had our first interest meeting for the next uh, advancement of God's kingdom through the expression called Relentless Church. And I shared with you guys that this shirt, this is our shirt. We have only a few of them left. I expect that they will be gone. They're in the bookstore. We have a few of them. Most of them uh, were were were. Uh, purchased by the people who are a part of your family in Atlanta, but this is Atlanta and uh, Greenville. I want to make it clear that we are one church in two locations. Uh, it's, the, it's one house. It's one pastor. It's one vision. Make that real clear. So you wear this shirt because you have two campuses that are relentless church, and you need to go to the bookstore, and I'm going to be in there, and I'm going to be giving you the fist bump with my mask on because I need some people here to understand that we are one church in two locations, but the location is not the issue. The region is the issue, and the warfare over the region is why the enemy is agitated. Jonathan, I'm going to need you to, wherever he went, tell Baker to get back in here. And I need you, Rashad, and the rest of y'all, and, and I need y'all to, to pray me through. I'm going a, I'm to a preach it like I feel it. Well, actually, I'm going to preach it as best as I can with how I feel. Uh, but, but there are people who are agitated by you because you've been doing things that they didn't expect and you did it without asking them if it was okay. There are people in your family that resent you because you've broken free from curses that some of them are still in bondage to. And they were in the same house as you and heard the same word as you, but they don't have the same results as you. But they haven't prayed the same prayers as you. They haven't cried the same tears as you. They haven't submitted the way you submitted, so they don't have the same result. But they resent the fact that you're free, and they are not. But the truth is, you're free in front of them so that they can see that if you can do it, they can too. Somebody say authority. This is a moment where God is establishing kingdom authority. This is not a time where God is establishing talent. This is not a talent show. The days of the talent show are over. I must admit that there were moments in my life where I thought that talent and personality uh, were things that you could connect with. And the reality is the entire ecosystem of church as a talent show and as a presentation without the substance is over. God is exposing that which is not rooted in him. And everything that has his name on it didn't come from heaven. I'm deeply concerned that most of the conversations that we as believers have are carnal in times where you need to be deeply spiritual. You still watching every soap opera that comes on. You still watching every game show. You still watching every show. And you, you pray for 10 minutes a day. 
Oh, it got quiet. I done came right on down your street. I didn't take my pain medicine on purpose this morning because when I don't take my pain medicine, I just say whatever's on my mind. In this season, you can't be carnal and spiritual. You got to choose. And the truth is, most people just want to live a regular life and go to church on the weekends and not really change. But I don't have that luxury. A reporter asked me on Wednesday, are you willing to die for this? I thought that was an interesting question from a regular old reporter. And it wasn't that he's a regular person. It wasn't him that asked. It, I believe that it was a question that was asked in the spirit. What are you willing to give up to do God's will? And I said, I, I, my life belongs to my father. I'm willing to lay down whatever it takes. But I'm not dying anytime soon. But I'm willing to lay down my life for this. That's my conviction. That's my calling. But I'm a man under authority. So if that's what it takes for God's will to get established that's on him but I'm not going to be unwise with the life that I have and I'm not going to be reckless with the life that I have but if you ask me what I'm willing to give up I give up anything you can't there's nothing that can hold me hostage you can't buy me I'm not for sale you can't you can't hold me hostage because the worst about me you already know so there it is boom batter my pockets is getting fatter you can talk about me all you want it doesn't stop the word of God doesn't stop the Holy Ghost doesn't stop the anointing. I'm going to keep preaching until I'm in that box. And when I'm in that box, I'm not in that box. My body's in that box, but my spirit is with God. Yeah. Ain't that right, Colin? High five on High five. Uh, ah. See, I need you guys to understand that I'm looking for the next John Gray. I'm looking for the next young men, the next young leaders that are going to change things for the rest of the kingdom of God. I'm, I'm believing that what God is doing in me is unlocking an authority in these teenagers. A 14-year-old girl said, Mama, I want to go to church in New Jersey. Somehow either they flew or got in the car and drove how many hours? Ten? Ten hours to come to church and it was the daughter that wanted to go now you know 14 year olds seem to be committed to everything except the things of God but there's something in that young girl's spirit that resonates and she says something about what's going on there I want to be a part of that speaks to my soul that means that what I'm doing is exactly what God wants to do because if you don't catch them by the time they're 13, 14, 15 you likely won't get them if you look at the statistics I got saved when I was 7 and I'm barely holding on what happens when you've been living carnal your whole life I'm I'm telling you there's something to be said about getting close to God early in your life. Train up a child in the way that they should go, that when they get older, they won't depart from it. I need some help in here this morning. We have a lot of churches, but very little authority. We got a lot of songs being sung, but very little authority. We got a lot of talented people and very little breakthrough power. And in this season, it's not going to be the ones that you know that have the oil. It's not going to be the name that has the oil. It's going to be the anonymous ones that God has been talking to when no one can see it. And then when they get the opportunity, they're going to have so much wisdom in their mouth that you won't be able to deny that the authority of God is on them. I'm, I'm talking about warriors that God is raising up for a suddenly moment. Am I talking to somebody? God is raising you up for a suddenly moment. Who am I talking to? You've been feeling something bubbling in your spirit like there's a move of God, that there's a work that you're supposed to do do and you're not sure exactly when but you know it's close it's almost like dun 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 pop goes the oil I I'm 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 hoping that you understand that what God is about to do and if your neighbor is asleep, wake them up. They don't sleep when they watch games. They don't sleep when they partying. They don't sleep when they twerking. They don't sleep when they smoking. They don't sleep when they drinking. Wake them up. Don't come to church and go to sleep. This ain't the time to sleep. You've been asleep your whole life. That's why your life look like it look. Wake up. Sit up. Matter of fact, stand up. Let me tell you why. Because this service right here, this service right here, 
this service right here is for those who understand that the day of your announcement is literally at hand and you don't have the you don't have another moment to waste God is getting ready to introduce your authority to the earth and he's going to do it without anyone's permission And when it happens, they're going to question you, elder. Oh, yes, they will. You don't believe me? Oh, yeah. Look at this right here, Matthew 21, the 23rd verse. Now, when Jesus came into the temple, the chief priests, the chief haters, and the elders of the people confronted Jesus. How are you going to confront Jesus? He is God, and you're going to confront him because you insecure? Insecure people are going to be talking about they already They already text about you. They, they done took you out their little feed. They don't like you anymore. They, they send little messages to each other. And it's so funny. It just bless their hearts. They act like God don't see what they're texting. Stop worrying about that. I need you to just keep going because the reason why they text it behind your back is because they don't have the authority to say it to your face. If they really had authority, they could say it to you, but they can't say it to you because they know not to mess with you. Because they're not messing with you, they messing with the God that's in you. Am I talking to anybody? Oh, I'm talking about 13 people here and about 153 of them online. Touch three people, say, he talking right. Well, maybe you can't touch him, just, you know, you know, you know, COVID touch, just the fist bumper. <laughs> The elders of the people confronted him as he was teaching. I want you to know that there's a spirit that's going to try to interrupt you as you're doing the thing you were called to do. There's a spirit that is so uncomfortable with the season you're about to step in that it's going to try to interrupt you while you're, <laughs> while you're speaking. It says while he was teaching, they interrupted. Here's why they interrupted. He has so much power in his mouth that people were being compelled to change right there while he was speaking. They were literally losing the allegiance of people. They were losing the hearts of people. The chief priests and the elders were losing their authority and their power because it was not rooted in God. It was an illusion rooted in fear and religion, but it was not real. And so here comes Jesus. Chill, humble, just teaching. And the power of his words were so persuasive. He didn't yell. He didn't scream. He didn't slap anybody in the face. He didn't smack them. He didn't punch them in the stomach. He didn't do some of the weird stuff that we see on TV. And that's why I'm not judging anybody, but I'm just saying, you know, we see a lot of things that, that don't look, they're, they're not in the Bible. It might be tradition, but it's not in the Bible. I ain't got to slap you in the forehead for you to get healed. Everybody Jesus touched got up. So why I got to hit you and that's, I'm, I'm not saying that it's not God. I'm just saying, when Jesus did it, you got up. I'm just saying, I don't have to be weird for it to be God. Sometimes the most God is the most regular conversation. We think the Holy Ghost is confined to this building. God wants to break out at the coffee shop. He wants to break out over breakfast. He wants to show up at the Walmart. He wants to show up in the middle of the aisle. You act like the only time you can speak in tongues is in here. You better start praying in the spirit when you're going down that aisle. You better know you need the Holy Ghost in the grocery store. You see, they shooting in grocery stores. They, they shooting at FedEx. They shooting all over the place. You better be in the spirit when you go. You, do you understand that some of the places where the enemy wanted to take over, he couldn't because you were there? I wish I had seven people that could just understand what I just said. The enemy hates you because every time God takes you somewhere, he's stopping something the devil wanted to do. You got so much oil that when you walk in, it changes the devil's plans. I'm telling you that everything that God is doing in this season is strategic. Last night, mommy, we were driving. You saw that I had no gas, and I was going to go to the gas station. The Lord said, don't go to that gas station. Go to the one down the street. It didn't make sense. There was one right in front of me. It was 300 feet away. He said, make the left turn. Go all the way down to the end of the street. Go to the, go to the ATM. Get cash. Then go to, to that, that, that gas station. When I got there, who pulled up? Elder Nick. 
Elder Nick pulls up. We have this exchange because we have been talking for the last couple days. And it might not seem like much, but he just happened to be driving past to get something for his wife for dinner and his kids. But what it was was an exchange in the spirit that we were at the same place at the same time and we were both not really supposed to be there. I just happened to be in place and he saw me. So where two are gathered. Now here's the thing. It might not seem like much, but whatever the enemy had planned for that corner at that moment was no longer valid because two who were there in agreement. And so we had authority over that corner. So the enemy couldn't have that territory because God's oil, God's oil was in that place. I need you to know that everywhere you go, you're literally interrupting hell's plan for that place. If you work at a bank, the enemy can't have that bank. If you work at a school, the enemy can't have that school. When you walk in the store, the enemy can't have that store because you're there. Somebody needs to declare out of their mouth, I have authority. Didn't Emily sing, I have authority? Didn't she sing that? Didn't you talk about authority? Did I tell you what to say? No, but the Lord told me last night, have Elder Lois pray. He told me that. I didn't tell you what I was preaching. You come up here and you said it. You were John the Baptist. Now this is the Christ. The Christ is the anointing, not the man. It's the anointing, not the man. And this is the season where God is showing people the anointing, not the man, not the woman. Because too long, people have gotten the glory for what God did. Oh, Lord. They interrupted him while he was teaching and said, excuse me, um, by what authority are you doing all of these miracles, sir? And who gave you this authority? But Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John. Where was it from? From heaven or from men? And they reason among themselves, saying, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the multitude, for all count John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus and said, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. I need you to hear me again for the second week in a row. Write this down or put it in your phone or say it out loud. Take territory without permission. Amen. Say it out loud. Take territory without permission. Say this one too. Be great without permission. The scribes and the elders were angry at Jesus because he was doing miracles and they did not authorize him to. What God is doing now is without permission. You don't need permission to be great. You don't need permission to take territory. When you have authority, you don't need permission. Oh, my God. My son, my son bless his heart, he doesn't understand things quite like he needs to. And uh, I told him, when you, you don't come in my room unless you knock. And even if you knock, if I don't say come in, you don't come in. And if you, if you come in my room without knocking, I'm going to give you a spanking because I got to teach you boundaries. So he says to me, he says, well, you don't, you don't knock when you come in my room. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, what? Excuse me, say what? Come again, say what? I said, let me tell you something. I said, let me tell you something. I said, I want you to look around. You see all this? This is mine. Everything in here is mine. Your sandwich is mine. I let you borrow that bread. I pay for that bread. That's my, that's, my, that's my turkey. That's my mayonnaise. This is mine. That's mine. Them grapes, that's mine. Your room is mine. Them sheets are mine. I don't knock on anything that's mine. You got to knock because I got authority in here. Your room is actually just a room I let you borrow. It's my house. It's my room. I give, you, I give you access, but you don't just walk up into my room without knocking because I got authority here. But I don't have to knock on any door in here because I pay for every door in here. I need you to understand that what God is getting ready to do, ooh, 
See, I've set before you an open door that no man can shut. And when the door is open, you don't have to ask permission because what the enemy wants you to do is live your life in apology. Well, I don't know if I'm qualified and I don't know that I'm not sure and maybe maybe God's calling someone else and maybe, you know, if I really look back at my past, I'm really not really. <laughs> and God has said, would you just please hush and walk? I need you to walk because where I'm taking you is not about your degree. It's not about your pedigree. It's about my anointing and I'm giving you authority and I've given you an authority to, to trample on serpents and squirrels and on all the power of the devil. Is there anybody that understands that you're stepping into an authority that you could not earn, that you do not deserve? My son is subject to my authority, but I've given him access. Ah, uh, help me, Holy Ghost. But he won't get access to everything until he's mature enough to handle it. I want you to write down some things about authority because it's important. I want you to grab these quickly, quickly. First of all, if you really are going to walk in authority, God-given authority is a byproduct of obedience. I got authority in the spirit, do you? If you do, it's because you walked in a place of obedience. Jesus had all, the Bible says, all authority has been given to me. Now, this is deep. He didn't get all authority at the beginning of his ministry. He had some authority. He didn't get all of it until he had walked through the complete process. You want all authority? You're going to have to die. You have to die to your will. You'll have to die to your way. You want all authority? You're going to have to lay down your life. But there are measures of authority that are given to you over time based on your obedience and your maturity. Somebody say grow up. There are some old, immature people. I don't have time to be around people that are aged physically, but not mentally. I don't have time for carnal conversations. I don't have time for idle chit-chat. I don't have time for goofy stuff. People are dying. There's a, there's a need in the spirit for mature people. Souls are at stake. I don't have time to be talking about stupid stuff and your gossip and what you saw on Facebook. Grow up. We need mature believers who have a wisdom and a knowledge base where if somebody is fighting demons, you have been in the spirit enough to pray them out of it. God-given authority is a byproduct of obedience. Number two, God-given authority is marked by humility. Don't tell me you have authority, but you mean the people. Don't tell me you are, you're a spiritual leader or you have somebody, you, you have authority in the church, but you ugly acting to folk. You can't speak to people. You know how many people have been brokenhearted because they met somebody that they thought was something in the kingdom, but what you met was talent. What you met was gift. But when you meet real God-given authority, there's a humility attached. There's a kindness attached. There's nobody that can say, I treated them any kind of, I don't treat people ugly. I don't care where you're at. If we be at Cracker Barrel or you catch me over at the Mexican restaurant, I'm saying hello. I'm probably trying to buy your food. I'm, I'm whatever. That's me. And I'm not doing it to try to act. That's who I actually am because that's how I was raised. But there are some people who think that they are God's gift to God. Like them being used by God is doing God a favor. He could snatch that thing off you so fast. Humble yourself or he will do it for you. God-given authority is marked by humility. If you don't have humility, if you walk around boastful, prideful, arrogant, God's going to deal with you. Next thing, God-given authority is marked by heaven's power. When you have authority from heaven, you got power. Now, last night, my, my mouth was literally, it felt like it was like three little people inside of my gum line with knives just doing a breakdance routine just in my gums. And I said, Lord, I'm grateful that uh, I have 
uh, been given authority over sickness and disease through the finished work of Jesus Christ. I thank you that I'm completely healed. And then I went on, and then all of a sudden I realized that the pain was gone in that moment. And I was like, wait a minute. God, did you do it? Well, wait a minute. I took some medicine like 30 minutes ago, so was it the medicine or was it my prayer? I just need to know. Here's what's funny. For a while, the pain was gone. Then it came back, and I was like, oh, man, my prayer didn't work. He said, it did work. I want to teach you something about perseverance. See, you think you pray one time, and it doesn't happen. You give up. You better get that Elijah thing on you. Go again. I don't see the cloud. Go again. It's still not there. Go again. I didn't get my answer. Go again. I need somebody to get a go again in your spirit right now. Do you think there are some demons that aren't leaving the first time you ask them to? I need somebody to help me. I'm, I'm trying to get through it. I'm trying to get through it. There are some devils that you're going to you gonna have to stay there. I said, leave. I said, get out. I said, I bind you. I said, come out of here. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, I need some power. I need somebody who understands some principalities are not leaving. Woo! But when you have God-given authority, it's marked by heaven's power. Here's the next thing about authority. When you walk in a spiritual office, the office doesn't define you. Your relationship to the Father does. You ever seen somebody that will always tell you their title? On your job, I'm, I am the, the senior vice president of, of the of the snack company. I'm, I'm the senior executive board member of the... That is translation. I'm insecure and I need the title to make me feel big. Real authority doesn't have to yell. It can whisper because it's still going to get the job done. Okay, y'all don't believe me. Let me keep going. I'm a pastor, but I don't walk around like... Uh, only refer to me as pastor. No, excuse me, bishop. I'm a high priest. Don't look me in my eyes. I'm amazing. <laughs> hey, John. Bishop John, how dare you? I'm anointed. Now, on the other side, I'm not going to be so casual that you can say whatever you want to me because I'm not common. God gave me authority, and you're going to respect me the way God respects. Yeah. Let me help you understand. There are people that I've served uh, who are, they'll say, hey, call me by my first name. No, sir. I'm going to call. I'm going to put pastor in front of your name. Just because you're casual doesn't mean I am. I was raised in a different era. I served Pastor Joel Osteen. There are people who, you know, I was talking to Joel. I was like, you was talking to who? Some of my coworkers. Yeah, Joel. I was like, I'm sorry, who? Because in my phone, it's still Pastor Joel. When I see him, it's Pastor Joel. And I count him not only as a pastor, but a friend. But I don't call him by his first name because I call him by the authority God gave him in the earth. Why is that important? I confer honor, so I expect honor. People here in the church, and I love everybody, but it's Pastor John. I ain't just John to the people here. Now, my family, I'm John, I'm John John, I'm Cousin John, all of that. But here... It's Pastor John, because in here, I have authority, and with that title comes a specific anointing. Now, what people don't understand about you is you can be multiple things in multiple places, but it doesn't change your oil. Oh, my God. Here's something else you need to know about authority. Authority is never granted without process. Somebody shout process. Process. There are people who want authority, but if you don't go through the process, you're not getting the authority. I can confer on you. I've had moments when I didn't feel like I deserved the mantle that I have, and I've prayed, and I've prayed, and I said, I pray a double portion over such and such, and God was like, that was nice, but I didn't ask you to do that, and I'm not answering that prayer. I was like, but Lord, it's a noble prayer. I want a multi. He said, that, that's, your heart is right, but your timing is off. And also, I didn't tell you to do that for them. You might have a heart for that, but I didn't tell you to do that. What you're really trying to do is run from your calling because you don't like the pain. 
I'm just being honest with y'all because we stand up here and we act like we love this. If you do this right, this is not a show. This hurts. This right here hurts. Real pastoring is painful. You'll learn betrayal like no other place when you serve in the kingdom. Because sheep will leave you for the next itching ear thing that sounds good. And you got to love them anyway. Anyway, let me, let me. Authority is never granted without process. And then measures of authority are given based on benchmarks. Luke 2.52, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. The word wisdom there, he grew. The word grow, watch this, means to beat forward or to lengthen out by hammering. Ooh, be careful when you say, Lord, I want you to grow me up. He going to beat the tar out of you. He going to beat your flesh into submission. And it says he will lengthen you out by hammering. Grow me. Boom. Ow. What are you doing? I'm growing you. Stop it. He beats the flesh off you. He matures you. And it is the pain of the process that gives you grace for other people. Watch this. Grew in wisdom. The word wisdom the wisdom which belongs to men or a varied knowledge of things human and divine acquired by acuteness and experience. Do you know that there are some things that you want that you won't get until you go through the experience? That takes time. Somebody say time. I know you're anointed, but you ain't spent enough time. You're anointed. Jesus was he was anointed in the womb, but he wasn't announced till he was 30. There can be a distance between your anointing and your announcement. He grew in stature. Watch this. The word stature means term or length of life, age, maturity. There is a maturity that comes with authority. That's why you don't give babies keys to a car. You don't put a six-year-old behind the wheel unless you're in the country because I heard down in Alabama where my wife is from, they let you drive in the fields. I'm sorry, Brandon, down there in Dothan, I heard you can be about 10 years old, they let you drive in the cornfields. That's illegal, y'all going to jail. But what I'm saying is this, in most places, they don't let you drive until you have gone through driver's ed. Now, why in the world do you have to get a driver's license, but you can just announce that you anointed and I'm supposed to give you a mic? You need a spiritual license. I need to see your fruit. I need to know what your process is. What Bible are you reading? Who taught you? Where'd you get that from? I need to know. And there is the season. This is the season we're in where everybody thinks that their process is valid. If you're not submitting to anybody. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to leave it alone. Say it. If you are the only authority in your life, you are out of order. Somebody say authority. Intentional authority. No, I need you to say intentional authority. There are spirits that are agitated because this church is in existence. We interrupted the regularly scheduled demonic activity in the region. And so when you mess with demonic principalities, there is going to be an attack. That's why if you're not ready for that level of attack, don't get in the fight. But if you're in it, then be in it to win it. Is there anybody here that's in it to win it? That was, that's a casual applause. I'll never forget, I was at a conference, a big old conference. It was a whole bunch of people, and a lot of them didn't look like me. In fact, most of them didn't look like me. And I remember them saying, hey, man, I just want you to go out there, man. Just make them laugh. Just, you know, just have a good time. You're so funny. And I was like, oh, you, you want me to tap dance? 
You, you, you remember that time when you did comedy? Yeah, in 2005. You want me to be what I used to be because you liked me then. You liked what I gave then, but I'm not that anymore. Yeah, I used to do Christian comedy. I know you want, you want people to laugh, but this is not the time for laughter. This is a time to understand where we are in the kingdom. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the comedian anymore. I'm the pastor who has a prophetic anointing, and I got to preach that. Now, if you want somebody to make you laugh, I can give you some phone numbers of some clowns, but I'm not a clown, and I'm also not for sale. So if you think that your, your, your honorarium is going to make me jump around and dance for you, you got the wrong one. Don't ever, ever stay in a room that wants you to be less than all of what you are. I know it's time to go. And, and this, is not, this is not the word where you're going to run around and shout, but it is a word where you understand that where we are right now is we're taking territory. This is, this is a word for those who understand that the authority that we have is in regions. The southeast region, the corridor between here and Atlanta, God has given us a measure of authority. I'm going to go ahead and take that authority. I just need to know who's walking with me. I need to see. I just want to, I want to make sure I know who's going with me. Okay, stay standing if that's you. They got angry at Jesus because he kept casting out demons. I heard Pastor Johnny Miller, Pastor YPJ, he said this a few weeks ago, and it, it really stayed with me. You don't hear a lot about demons in the Old Testament. You don't. Under the law... Everybody was already broken. The enemy had authority. The, you don't see demons start acting a fool till Jesus shows up. The more anointed you are, the more demonic activity is going to increase. Did you hear what I said? They missed it, Pastor Robert. Here's what I'm trying to say. Demons knew somebody with authority had shown up. Y'all see that strobe light? What is that strobe light? Are we fixing that? What is it? Is that? He said it's the anointing. It's, it's a bad light. That's what it is. I would love to be deep, though. But, but here's what's funny. Now, the, now they're all acting up. And here's what's funny. They told me last night that the, the lighting board was acting goofy. And, and, and then they told me this morning that it was fixed. So apparently uh, it's acting goofy again. But here's what I know. You can't get distracted. And notice it didn't start acting up until I asked you, are you with me or not? And what strobe lights do is they knock your, they, they cloud your vision. They hinder your ability to focus. Oh, Lord, help me. Even, even what's accidental is actually happening for the purpose of this word. You said you're with me, so you should expect distraction. If you said you're, you're going to take territory, you should expect interference. Jesus was casting out devils everywhere he went. Come out of him. What did he say? Jesus, help me. He says to, he says to the, the demoniac in Mark 5, he says, come out of that man, unclean spirit. Then he said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. What's your name? He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. Jesus said, wait a minute, before I cast you out, I need to know your name because I'm not going to be doing this more than one time. And then we know about the house divided against itself cannot stand. He says, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus said in, uh, oh, there we go. They really went off. All kind of stuff is going on. Didn't I tell you I needed y'all praying? Don't be moved by any of this stuff that's going on. I love it. Hey, Y'all keep going, hey, Brady, is something going on with the, with the lights? I love it. That's fine, because I don't need that. 
I got my own light. Let your light so shine before men. Am I talking to anybody? It's so funny. I love the Lord. While all of this stuff is going on, y'all like, wait a minute, he started talking about demons and the light started going crazy. I said I'm with him, but I'm not sure if I'm with him. And I, this is crazy. I just want to go down the street to the regular church. No, you don't. You don't want regular life. You don't want to just keep living in it. You want supernatural. You want the power of God. You want to interrupt demonic principalities. Jesus said in Matthew 12, every kingdom divided against itself <laughs> is brought to destruction. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by who do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. He said, but if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? Then he will plunder his house. So now you go back to Jesus saying, come out unclean spirit. Wait a minute, what's your name? Let me get that main one, because once I get that main one, all the rest of them got to go. When you have authority, you don't have to speak to all of them. You just got to speak to that main one. I'm trying to help them, Elder. Something shifted in the atmosphere. I felt it. I know that there's warfare. That's the agitation I've been feeling. I need a few mature believers right now to begin praying in the spirit very quietly. Just begin to pray. Online, I need you to begin to pray. And here's why I'm glad the lights are acting goofy. Because the lights are, are programmed. And God doesn't want programmed anymore. It has to be a real authentic move of God. And some things are not going to be planned and coordinated. And you're going to need to be able to pray in the Holy Ghost and not when it's convenient to you. You better be filled with the Spirit at a moment's notice and you better be able to intercede at a moment's notice. I need somebody praying right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that even in this moment, you will give us the clarity of perspective to understand that the authority we have been given is from heaven. And when we cast out demons from regions, we should expect pushback. But it cannot, must not, will not change our posture. We are the people of God. We have the authority of God. We carry the power of God. And in this moment, I declare that the authority of God is alive and well in Relentless Church. Furthermore, I declare that every demonic principality in the region from here all the way to Powder Springs and everywhere in between has been served notice that we establish the authority and the territory as now the kingdom of God. It belongs to God and we are relentless and I am not alone for I stand with the people of God here and online and around the world who call Relentless Church home. Are there any people that will stand with me and declare that the authority of heaven backs us now? I got... I just need two or three. What's interesting is when you pull out the strong man, the rest have to go. I had this wisdom tooth removed. This is a real thing. They numbed the area, but because of how deep that thing was, I still felt it as they were pulling. Never felt pain like this in my life. At one point, they actually had to drill into the tooth, put medicine all the way into the bone, and I could still feel it. They used four different devices to try to get this tooth because it was so deep-rooted. I'm talking about now spirits because some stuff's not coming out easy. That's what today is. Thank you, Lord. I've been fighting this entire message because I feel the warfare. The devil's been offended since Wednesday when God showed up in an interest meeting in another territory. We are offending demons. That means we're honoring God. Pulled the tooth out. Watch this. As he was pulling, he said, now, I'm going to need to embrace you. The dentist, the orthodontic, the orthodontic surgeon, whoever he was, he said, I need to put your head on my chest, I need to get close enough to pull this thing out. 
I need to hold you while I do it. I don't know who this is for, but the Father's getting ready to hold you while he uproots that thing that's been causing the most pain in your life. And he finally pulled it out. He said, I got it. I got it. And I got it at its root. Watch this. He pulled it out at its root. And he said, had it stayed, it would have continued to impact your other teeth because what was wrong with this one could actually transfer to the other teeth around it. God is delivering some of you right now this second today because if he didn't get it now, it was going to impact your kids. It was going to impact your marriage. It was going to impact everything that God wants to do. And some of you right now, there's a devil that's been sitting up in your life and God just extracted that thing from you right now. And I need you to give God praise for deliverance. Father, seal this word in the name of Jesus, and I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost that you would fill the area where you removed the enemy with the Holy Spirit so that when, when the enemy tries to come back, that place that was left void by the removal of that spirit has now been filled by the Holy Ghost and nothing else can get in. I declare it so in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus or you want to be a member of Relentless Church, everybody pray this prayer with me. Say it out loud. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, but the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough to pay for all my sins. Now, Holy Spirit, come live inside and teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you just prayed that prayer, you are saved. And if you prayed the prayer and you were already saved, you're now a member, if you wish to be, of Relentless Church. I want you to text the number saved text the, the word saved to the number on the screen. Everybody get your phone out. Somebody got saved in here. And you can also text the word member if you want to be a member. Text the word member to that number. We're going to follow up with you to my New Jersey family and to my Houston family and to my Savannah, Georgia family. I think she said Savannah. We got some folk from Rhode Island and other areas. We honor all of you. Atlanta, we honor all of our visitors. And for those from Greenville, I hope that you come back. You have a safe place here. We give so much glory to God for your lives. Today was a different kind of flow because we're hitting up against something because we're taking territory. My prayer is that you will receive the word of the Lord and that you all will leave here knowing you have authority. Your father gave it to you, so walk in it. And I hope that you online text the word save to the number on the screen or member. And then we're going to get you connected to our Emerge Growth Track so that you can walk through the process of becoming a part of this community in a meaningful way. I love you guys so much. Let's go to the bookstore, get your shirt. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord God be gracious to you, show you his favor, and give you his peace. Love you. Tell somebody we're going to do it again in a little less than an hour. You want to be there because we're going higher and we're going deeper. Love y'all.